just want to talk about uh, Mac Miller's recent passing yesterday mm -hmm. of a drug overdose at age 26. Um, now, obviously, for those who don't know, you, big fan of Mac, so uh, I want I you to drive him. this conversation because I know how much he influenced you. So what was, or was that the first person to tell you when you, when you woke up? Or how did you hear about no, it? How did you hear about it? You're the first one to tell me. So as soon as I woke up, I checked my phone and a message would be like, sorry about Mac. And I was just like, sorry about what? What, what did Mac you think I meant? I thought Mac could like maybe, like maybe had another DUI or maybe he'd done something like, you know how with today, a lot of the allegations thought maybe like Ariana came out that he was abusive or not that I thought he would, but like, I thought it'd be something like that. I just didn't think he was, you know, dead. Especially after listening to his album. It's really interesting because his track self care holds so much more meaning now because mm. that's exactly sort of what happened. Like, I think maybe, I obviously I don't know, but I think that like, because he, he was about to go on tour because he just released his new live video he was about to go on tour I think maybe he was just like look before I go on tour maybe I just have like one night by myself just you know take some stuff for the hell of it and then I won't take it because that's what addiction is in a way like you always tell yourself oh this will be the last time or this will be the last or this will you know I'll just do this this time like because I've been around a lot of people struggling so maybe he was going through that sort of mindset and mixed the wrong things and you know, OD'd so I, I don't you know I don't really need to know but he definitely I don't think he wanted to go out that way I don't, I don't think, I'm, I'm like 90% sure that he did not want to go out there. Did you hear day. what he said in his recent interview about how, like, I don't want to misquote him, but he talked about this, like in a mm -hmm. recent interview, how, like, he doesn't want to go out on a drug overdose. He doesn't think that's like, I'm going to get the quote. Sorry, yeah. you have, obviously haven't seen it. Mm, is that the 10 minute interview one? I've seen a lot of his interviews, but I have a bad memory, of course, but... Or I reckon that maybe he would, like I said, he just had a night where he would have just taken something because he either wasn't coping with being a man. And also, for y'all motherfuckers blaming Ariana Grande for his death, you can go fuck yourself. That is so selfish and stupid. And that makes me fucking angry because she's been through hell and back. And she's probably hurting as much as anyone in his family right now. Right. So you need to fucking think about what you're saying. Because seriously, your words have fucking, you know, they have consequence, man. It's fucked up. Agreed. You like you can't put that on somebody no. when you don't understand the nuances of the situation. Exactly. You know, you just can't because she's going to be receiving mm -hmm. thousands of just fucking notifications like, on this. This happening is probably a big part of the reason why she couldn't deal with being in a relationship with him. Like we don't know the details, but she obviously chose to not do it for her own reasons, and she's hurting a lot, man. I spent all of yesterday in a fucking numb slumber and I worked a like 13 hour shift and I didn't give a fuck. I had people coming up to me at the bar and being like, we're like, hey, how you doing? They're like, better if you get me a drink. And I just look at them and just be like, cool, what do you want? I just, just did not have any energy or emotion to just like try and just talk to people, man. But um, yeah, I got on, like I got to Mac like probably, cause obviously the first track I would have heard was around kids era would have been kool-aid frozen pizza and nikes on my feet and that's when i got into kids that's still probably like my most nostalgic album from him because i smoked it was like a summer jam in a way that's like mac before he got on the drugs like he just smoked weed so it's very happy party sort of rap and all about pittsburgh where he came up and then of course like after that was best day ever which did pretty well but i wasn't huge on that tape i liked more singles from that and then it leads into Macadelic, which is, uh, I believe, 2011, 2012. I think it's 2012, where, where that's where the drug started to come into influence. Like, he obviously had got to a stage of his life where he was over to smoking weed and partying, and he wanted to, like, experiment more to either improve his music or improve his, his experience through life. Because that's what drugs can do. As much as they take lives away, they can actually uh, open you up to a lot of new ways to see life or, or live life. It's just about, I believe it's personally just about balance and just knowing what you're taking and understanding it. Can I give you two quotes that are quite eerie? Mm -hmm. He said, um, and this is what I tweeted and Instagrammed out as well. Like his verse from Godspeed. Do you remember that song? It's come to fruition. Uh, yes, that's, which album is that on? I can't remember, but there was a line yeah. from it that said, they don't want me to OD and have to talk to my mother, telling her they could have done more to help me and she'll be crying saying that she'll do anything to have me back. Actually, I remember seeing an artist tweet that. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said another line in another song, I'm just hoping not to join the 27 Club. Mm -hmm. It's like... 
he actually mentions uh, his death in a lot of his songs. Like you could actually quote, I reckon at least 20 or 30 songs, especially on albums like Faces, uh, parts of Watch Movies with the Sound Off, parts of Macadelic, uh, even with like, I guess, Delusional Thomas maybe, but like there's definitely like Faces would be the main one where he's in a very dark place. Like he's still, yeah, even though when he goes from like Happy Birthday to Wedding to Funeral, like those three tracks, like are just like big on those topics. Uh, but yeah, from Macadelic through to Watch Moves with the Sound Off to Faces, those three albums are like, to me, the best Mac ever got with his music and the way he rapped, but it's also the time that he was in the darkest mindset. It's amazing how sometimes the scariest part that a human can be in can also be when they release their greatest music. Like, right. Like so many people, like I'm, I'm always just like, yo, I'm glad this happened to this artist because I know I'm going to get great music from him. But it's so selfish in my knowing that you know, the consequences are real and the consequence was real. Exactly. It's like, is it worth getting, is it worth getting these albums from these artists if you, if this happens? Well, I think it's less about us and more about what they have to do as a person. Like mm. this is just, a, I think a byproduct of their being. So uh, when you listen to swimming, it's, it sounds quite cathartic, quite meditative. Like yeah. it helped him. I read a really nice tweet from an artist too. It was one person that was close and worked with him. I believe, uh, I remember it soon. But he said, uh, I, I've worked with Mac and all this sort of stuff. And eventually, what he got with swimming, I believe that he finally found the sound that he wanted to create for so long. Because you hear Essences and Divine Feminine and Good AM. Because like, Good AM, I felt, was a bit too, had a bit too much either pop to it or trying to be a bit hard into like different hip-hop schemes. And you can hear it lead to Divine. And with swimming, I can kind of get that. Because swimming is better than those two albums, in my opinion. But... So someone, one of his close friends was like, I believe this is the, the sound he was trying to get and finally create it. So I think it's, if that is what happened with Mac, that it's really beautiful that he finally found that before he passed. There is one line that is, quite, this is the line that I was actually looking for. So I apologize about being on my phone so much. Yeah, I'd rather be the corny right rapper than the drugged out mess who can't even get out of his house. Overdosing is just not cool. You don't go down in history because you overdose. You just die. He'll go down in history, though. Another nice one, well, it was kind of like nasty or nice at the same time. It was Ugly Gods one where he said, look, you released your album the same day as Travis Scott, and people just like, who's Mac? Laughing, like, just like, oh, what's this going on? And it was like, and he, Ugly Gods, he had a conversation with Mac, and he was just like, me and Mac were talking about it. Mac was joking that like, yo, what if I died? Then they wouldn't be saying this shit. Mm. And that's wow, exactly what that's happened. That's crazy. And Ugly God was like, but he said it in kind of like a real, like he was mad, man. A lot of people were mad. But shout out to the majority of the hip hop community, especially a lot of the artists who have come out, dozens of them, hundreds of them have come out and, and, and brought out their support and positivity. Well, that's the thing, man, because he had such a positive influence around hip Like he never was like sort of negative or angry at like people. If you look at a lot of rappers and people's tweets, like most people, especially with his studio, like he had a really fucking high, high, uh, like equipment studio. And he would invite everyone in there, like a lot of Odd Future, uh, TDE, like Absol, School Q recorded albums of his, El Sweatshirt's last album was recorded in his studio. Like he was close to so many artists and even like, Newer artists as well. He would call them up and give them advice. Like I remember reading so many articles about younger rappers coming up in the last five years. It would always be like, most of them be like, Mac Miller called me just to be like, hey, I see you're on the come up. I love what you're doing. I want to give you some advice. Like he was all about just like reaching out to the hip hop community. He was, he was so invested in it that he just wanted to help any way he could. And that's like, that's I think, beautiful. And that's one of the biggest things. Like it wasn't just his music, man. It was just his... Like his persona. Yep, his persona, his ethic, and his ability to care so much. That's beautiful. I think mm -hmm. he's, um, you know, no one really wished death upon anyone, but he just dropped pretty much a very good body of work, and, mm -hmm. and he's left his life on a really positive note and a really sh strong legacy within 26 years. Exactly. In 26 years, I believe he's dropped five classics to me, and that's amazing for a man that's a quarter, just over a quarter of a century. So Right, exactly. <laughs> of, of course, I'm bummed that I'm not going to get more, and I believe he did have so much more to give since he was constantly improving his sound, but, you know, can't change it. I'm very happy with the discography he's left. Mac Miller, I didn't get into you. I only got into you late, man, but I appreciate what you did for this uh, music industry and the last album you just dropped. Um, it, it brings a lot of light into people's lives and so did you. So I feel like I'm, I'm trying to talk, I'm talking to him, but I'm not talking to him. It's quite weird, mm. but 
I'll talk to the universe. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. You pretty much became my favorite artist this year, but you've been in my top five for like the past like four or five years. So thank you, man. Or Jungle Beats. <coughs> Jungle Beats. Rest in peace. I don't really say rip because yeah. I, I don't know where people go. I'm yeah. just, I'm, it's all about the they impact they leave here, man. I feel like we got to come up with something a bit different. I mean, we can do our own thing. Just thank you. That's, that's all. A, that's what I do. Just I'm just thank like, you. thanks, man. Yeah. Wherever the fuck it is, if you're not here, wherever you are, thank you.